Okay, so I'm going to show you how to install Inkscape 0.92 and then add the JTEC plugin which will allow you to create G code to cut DXF files. So once you've downloaded the appropriate version of Inkscape for your computer and the zip file with the JTEC plugin, you want to make sure you install this onto your computer and then extract the zip file and then you want to copy the laser python file and the xml file so just copied it there, control c and i'm going to go to the c drive to program files to inkscape share and extensions and I'm going to paste it into this folder continue, continue and that's kind of it so if we go back to Inkscape, if I open Inkscape now and you'll find the new plugin under extensions and generate laser code and then you've got the JTEC photonics laser tool there and the secret to using this is simply importing your DXF files and not opening them. If you open the DXF file you will have scaling issues when you then go to export the G-code. Um, so don't press open, press import, find your file, this is an example. my origin point on my CNC machine so my origin position is actually the top right uh, point of the CNC machine so um, I would have to position the DXF file off the off the canvas uh, before generating the g-code and it's simply a matter of going to the plugin um, adjusting these so that they're at the right settings um, I'm gonna kinda go into this a little bit more my CNC machine the power setting is actually um, in relation to the RPM speed so the max power is actually 24,000 as opposed to um, 255 or half of the uh, spindle speed. Um, also I'm using gerbil 1.1 so I can use, well there's a few things I should add to the code to make cutting a little bit safer um, but essentially even just generating this will work if I press apply, it's created the G code around that. If I open the G code, you can see you can see it's at the right scale for my wasteboard. So my wasteboard is roughly thirty-two centimeters across, and this should be 12 centimeters across, I can't remember now but that looks like it's to scale and in the position I expected it okay I'm gonna try cut a tool path using the uh, laser this is the PLHRE-D 6 watt laser from OPT-LASER and it looks pretty cool this fits into my CNC machine like that. So the laser now is about 40 mm uh, above this board. Just opened the G code that I exported from Inkscape using the 
JTEC Photonics laser tool. I know I'm not using their laser but they've also provided this as an open source tool uh, and with a bit of tweaking it can work with my setup. Um, the thing I need to do is just make a few changes so at the start I need to copy this in and at the end I'm putting the $32 command and setting that to zero so basically $32 equals 1 enables the gerbil laser mode and then I'm setting the laser mode to M4 which is dynamic which means when the laser comes to a standstill because the steppers have stopped moving it's going to turn off so I don't burn a hole uh, through the wasteboard. So I can save that. So I'm gonna put these on. I'm going to not look directly into the laser. I'm going to keep kind of behind the controller. Uh, this should be quite quick and then I'll be able to make a judgment of the effectiveness of what I've just done based on the outcome on the paper. While using the laser I noticed first of all the fan pushed air downwards onto the material, in this case pushing the paper all over the place, but also the signal voltage seemed to be stuck at 4.3 volts. I tried to toggle the laser signal but wasn't getting the full range I was expecting. I removed the laser head and measured the voltage with a voltmeter at the magnetic docking head. I placed the red probe on the signal wire, which at the time happened to be going to the TTL input, and the ground probe to the ground terminal. No matter what I did, I kept on getting 4.3 volts. So this is where the video becomes a little non-linear. Luckily, when I made the first few test engravings, I specified a max PWM of 225, thinking that would send 5 volts to the laser, but instead it sent the lowest signal of a range which happened to be 4.3 volts. Nathan happened to pop into the workshop and offered to check the signal using his oscilloscope so we could see the waveform. He noticed the PWM signal from the controller looked like a constant DC voltage and the oscilloscope could not read the wave type. It turned out after looking at a diagram of the Phoenix controller that there's a 1UF moving capacitor which changes the PWM from the Arduino AT Mega 328-PU in anticipation that the signal will be going to the analog input of a VFD. The problem I have is the VFD expects a 0 to 10 volt signal so it can adjust the RPM speed but the laser engraver expects a 0 to 5 volt signal instead. I remember seeing a schematic of the VFD manual which included a jumper to swap the analog input from 10 to 5 volts but I never found this on the actual VFD so stuck with the preset 10 volts. I decided to take the front panel off completely and there it was, JP1. After I swapped the jumper I had to adjust the blue potentiometer on the Phoenix controller so it sent out a 0 to 5 volt signal instead. The thing which makes my controller unusual is I am swapping between a VFD and a laser. I have two toggle switches at the front of the controller. The first is an on off switch which when on sends 24 volts to the laser and the second switch is an on off on switch which sends PWM and spindle enabled signals to the VFD or just the PWM to the laser. The S command instead of going between 1 to 255 instead references the spindle speed so S24000 now sends a 5 volt signal from the controller and when received by the VFD results in the max RPM but the lowest signal I can send is 2 volt which would be something like 9600 RPM on the spindle. I change the relevant PWM settings in the config.h file and reflash the controller but this hasn't made a difference. I can still only send a signal between 2 and 5 volts. Because I'm using an air-cooled spindle I shouldn't really run it below 10,000 RPM but when I use the laser I'd like to have the full PWM range of 0 to 5 volts. To be honest I could live with this but 
I'd also like to understand what is causing the range in the voltage signal. Is it something pre-written on the control board to act like a failsafe? Or is there a more advanced setting in the firmware that could override this but I've overlooked? What I have done is I've changed the value uh, for the spindle PWM minimum value to 1. Originally I, changed, I had it at 109 to try and set the minimum speed but what I'm going to do is let the controller um, send the full range of uh I got a little bit desperate for an answer so I posted a question in the issues section of the gerbil version 1.1 github page and uh, Shamnit replied and, and told me to look a little closer at the cpu underscore map dot h file and I think I found what it was. I think not. I have no idea what's going on. The changes I made to the firmware did nothing. There you go. I think I'm going to just live with this for now. Um, I was speaking to Nathan about the problem with the PWM jumping from its off position from zero to just over two volts uh, and then being able to go through the range of two to five um, which obviously in this case translates to the spindle starting at about 10,000 rpm which isn't really a problem but when using the laser it means that I start about or just under 50 percent of the uh, overall power of the laser and obviously it would be nice to be able to go from zero to a hundred percent throughout all the increments uh, as opposed to missing the initial part out um, the main thing I guess uh, that affects is kind of rastering uh, black and white images and kind of creating the impression of a grayscale on uh, something you're engraving so you miss that kind of detail out Anyway, I was speaking to Nathan about this and he thinks there's a type of circuit that we could produce, although he would have to tell me how to do it. I have no idea how I'd go about this, in which the PWM from the controller will be mapped to essentially 0 to 100% as opposed to what is roughly 50% to 100% at the moment. I'll be curious to know if anyone else has a similar problem or has noticed anything with their firmware controller. The gentleman who produced the controller, called Harry, sent me a version of his uh, firmware which I put on the controller, but that didn't seem to work either. He's been really helpful getting back to my email, so I'm really thankful for that. So it's either something to do with what I've done with the controller, how I've set it up, maybe I've damaged it in some way. Uh, his seemed to work, um, his firmware was a little bit different. Uh, maybe there's some problems with uploading the firmware, although it seems to be uploading correctly from the Arduino IDE. Like I said, I think I'm going to live with this, but what I will do is try get my hands on another controller, maybe a different type or just a plain Arduino board with a shield. In fact, I do have one in the old controller. If I take that and flash it with the same firmware, I should be able to compare the PWM signal from that with my current controller. So going back to the initial thing that this video was meant to be about, cutting the excess files with the laser, um, obviously you have to select the interior vectors first before cutting the outer vectors and tooling that up appropriately, but also maybe using something like a sheet of metal on your wasteboard, which you can then Put your piece of paper on and magnetically hold the piece that you're trying to cut down. I'm sure if I just rested this like this I'll still burn the wasteboard underneath so really I should think of uh, maybe putting something else down as well. That was going to be a drawing of a pug. <laughs> Thank you.